Hi, thanks for taking the time to join me in my study. This week in my Defenders Sunday School class, I finished teaching on the Doctrine of the Atonement and transitioned to the subject of the Resurrection of Jesus. And making this transition gave me the occasion to reflect a little more deeply on the connection between Christ's death and his resurrection. Paul says in Romans 4.25 that Christ was put to death for our trespasses and raised for our justification. So that the atoning death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ are like two sides of the same coin. We shouldn't think of the resurrection as an independent and unconnected event that is sort of an appendage to the atoning death of Christ. Rather, these are somehow organically related. Now, one of the principal criticisms of the penal substitution theory of the atonement is that it makes no room for the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus doesn't seem to be intrinsically connected with the atoning work of Christ. It's Christ's substitutionary punishment for our sins that achieves the expiation of our sins and divine pardon of those sins. And so once the death of Christ has been accomplished, there doesn't seem to be any intrinsic connection with his being raised from the dead. And this is one of the principal criticisms that proponents of the Christus Victor or ransom theory of the atonement have pressed against penal substitution. On the ransom theory, the resurrection is intimately connected with the death of Christ because it is by means of raising Christ from the dead that Satan is defeated, God breaks the uh, bounds of sin and hell and the power of Satan over us by freeing us or liberating us from Satan's power. And so, ransom theorists claim, their theory makes more sense of the resurrection of Jesus than does penal substitution. Now, at one level, I was never deeply bothered by this objection because, as I've said many times, the doctrine of the atonement is a multifaceted doctrine. And if the resurrection of Jesus is connected more intrinsically with the facet of the doctrine, which is the ransom theory, that's not a deficiency of another facet of the atonement, namely penal substitution. The resurrection will be connected with the entire doctrine of the atoning death of Christ, but not necessarily with every facet. Still, one does wonder whether or not the resurrection of Jesus isn't more intimately connected with the penal substitutionary theory than is often believed. At one level, the resurrection of Jesus serves as a ratification of the efficacy of Christ's atoning death. By raising Jesus from the dead, God vindicates Jesus' atoning death on our behalf and shows to all that in fact God has accepted his sacrifice as efficacious for our redemption. So there is a sort of connection between penal substitution and the resurrection of Jesus. But again, this connection isn't intrinsic. It's merely a sort of epistemic connection. The resurrection is God's validation that the atoning work of Christ has been efficacious. Is there some way in which the resurrection is more organically or intimately connected with penal substitution? Well, it seems to me that there is. It seems to me that the resurrection of Jesus is a consequence of the satisfaction of divine justice. Christ's atoning death satisfied God's justice by bearing the punishment that we deserved for our sin. Now, since the consequence of the punishment of sin is death, if Christ has fully paid the penalty for sin, then it follows that Christ cannot remain dead. A criminal who has fully discharged the sentence of punishment, which he was given by the court, 
can no longer be imprisoned. He cannot be punished any longer. That would be an injustice. So if Christ has fully satisfied divine justice by his dying in our place, it follows that the resurrection of Jesus is a consequence of his satisfaction of divine justice. He cannot remain dead. God must raise him from the dead. Otherwise, God would be unjust to continue Christ's punishment when in fact divine justice has been fully satisfied. So it seems to me that the resurrection of Jesus is indeed organically and intimately connected with the atonement. On the one hand, the resurrection is a consequence of the satisfaction of divine justice by Christ's substitutionary death. And then secondly, it is God's ratification to us of the efficacy of Christ's atoning death for us.